Shakopee is fired up for tonight's game. First quarter, one minute in. After the intro, of course, Carson Hansen with the 55-yard TD busting up the middle for the Cougars. It's six to nothing, but the Sabres battle back. 13 nothing for fourth and goal. Jaden Hellerud. Lakeville Salt jumped out to a 13 nothing lead, but Jaden Hellerud's touchdown pass to Nicholas Katana put Shakopee up 14 13 at the half. To Nicholas Katano for the four yard TD passes, 13 6, 14 13 at the half, but the Cougars come back. Rallied. Camden Dean hits a Schlebisek for a touchdown here in the fourth quarter, and Lakeville South remains unbeaten with a 30 to 22 win. Three, taking on Lester Prairie first quarter, Crusaders Dylan Nelson goes 35 yards to the house. It's six nothing. Defense coming to play two. Tegan Martin says, cookies, I'll have that. And that is a pick six. Potential all-metro guy, Randy. He's playing his college ball at Liberty. Mayor wins big, 39 to eight. Now to high school football, a big matchup in Goodhue tonight as the four and two Wildcats hosted Triple A's top ranked Lake City Tigers. First half, Wildcats down three nothing, but not for long. Malachi Parker makes a man miss, gets to the outside, and then says, see you later. It's a house call for Goodhue as the Wildcats jumped out to a 7-3 lead. But on the ensuing kickoff, the Tigers turn tragedy into triumph. Matt DeMars fields the line drive kick, takes it right up the middle, finds a seam. All of a sudden, he's off to the races. It's a kickoff return for a touchdown. Lake City now up 10-7, not looking back. Later in the half, same score. Lake City's Justin Wollers gives 10 cents to Zach Dather. It's an absolute dime for the touchdown. Lake City would go on to take a 24-7 lead. Still in the half, Goodhue tried to get back in the game. The Wildcats give the ball to Parker. He bounces this one to the outside and nearly takes it all the way to the house. It's a massive gain for Goodhue to set them up in the red zone. Then a few plays later, they found the end zone. Ethan Mathies pounds it in from short range. Goodhue now down 24-13, but when the dust settled up in Goodhue, Lake City rolled to a 59-40 win. Justin Wollers had three touchdown passes. Tigers running back Chris Ryan ran for 188 yards and four touchdowns. Lake City closes out the season next week against Cannon Fall. Minnetonka has two tackle cancer nights. This was night number two as they raised money for cancer research and patient aid in Minnesota. Here we go to the football game. Centennial's Lance Nielsen Jr. with a carry stuffed by William Richmond that ends a big drive. Skippers take over. Tyler Lean on the reverse pitch. He'll go 30 uh, down the sidelines for a 34 yard gain. That would set up a field goal try by Keegan. Tyler Lean. Watch this. It's the reverse, Mike. Oh, and it uh -oh. is set up well, and he will make the corner, and he will go a long way with it. Credit Centennial, though. They're the Villa. He'll knock it home from 30. Skipper's up 3-0. Cougars ball. Seth Beal. Watch him on the edge. Make the huge hit. That's him with the arrow. And the fumble recovered by Prentice Wheatley. Second quarter, Skipper's ball, Brett Worley, tough nine yard run down to the half yard line. Two plays later, Joseph Gendro takes it in from two yards out. Tonka's up 10 to nothing. Centennial's got a sophomore quarterback, Dalen Cummings. Big pass here to Luke Clark, but the ball is stripped. Apparently it was ruled down at the spot of the fumble, so no touchdown. Skipper's ball, their defense made plays all night long all night long as they just stifled Centennial's offense. You see the team defense there. Minnetonka gets the ball back. Will Martin to Gendro for the first down. A little bit later, same combination. Watch the spin by Martin breaks a tackle, or a Gendro rather breaks a tackle, takes it in, 17-0. Back comes Cummings. This one to Chase Granzow. 65-yard touchdown strike. So the Cougars get back in down 17-7. Under a minute left in the half. Martin to Casey Miller down to the five yard line. 32 seconds left. Martin to guess who? Gendro again. Five yard score. Third touchdown of the first half. 24-7 at halftime. Evan Swenson having a huge year. Leads the state in interceptions. Big hit right there. And then Martin finds Miller to ice the game. Minnetonka wins tonight. 
to up their record to six and one. Final was 31-7. You know, we started coming into the season knowing we're going to be a fighting team, but now we know we're that fighting team. Uh, it's a great win for us. This is a proving game. This proves what Minnetonka is, proves what Minnetonka football can be, proves what we're going to be in the future. It's a proving game for us. Our like motto the whole year has been prove them wrong since we haven't had a successful season in the past few years, and I think we're proving them wrong tonight. I mean, it was a great team win. O-line blocked well. Receivers ran good routes. But the ball where it needed to be, it was a good win. We kept our offense off the field. Uh, no sustained drives. We burned some clock in the first half, which helped, and just made plays when we needed to. We were trying to send a message that we're a legitimate football team, and uh, I think we did that tonight with a big win over a good football team, and I'm happy and I'm proud of our kids more than anything. St. Michael Albertville, Maple Grove, tackle cancer night for the Crimson. Derek Jamison off the pitch, 10-yard touchdown run, 6-0 Maple Grove. Back comes St. Michael Albertville, Owen Neros to Riley Purcell. 60-yard touchdown strike, beautiful pass, and it's 7-6, Knights. Jacob Kilzer, the quarterback for Maple Grove, on the keeper. 28-yard touchdown, and Maple Grove wins 38-17. Big win. Ryan Cadilla is just a sophomore, and he's got quite a future. He tied the game for the Knights at 17 with a touchdown. But the best player on the field was on the other team. His name is Derek Jamison, and he is special. He scored four times Ooh. tonight for Maple Grove. They scored the next 21. They win at 38 to 17. For the fourth quarter, so Jamison gets loose and goes for a 44-yard touchdown run. Part of a 207-yard rushing night for the senior. Maple Grove leads 31-17. Jamison scores his fourth rushing touchdown later from 23 yards out. Maple Grove improves to 6-1 on the season with a 38-17 win. West is once again one of the best in its class tonight on the road at Northfield. You can win games with defense. Mecky Collins, nice coverage, nice read, and really nice job. <laughs> nice, high pointing yeah. the interception. And that can turn into points quickly. Walker Britz. With a burst right up the middle, you saw this one earlier. He's heading right into your living room. And they made it look easy. West is still unbeaten. They knocked off Northfield 48-0. It's just not turf, it's everything. New stadium, bleachers, concession stands, bathrooms, new nine-lane track. Again, it's not quite done, but it's getting close enough, and they get a play on it tonight. So let's go to Elk River, hosting Alexandria tonight. And uh, what a wild game this was. Kristen Hoskins is the gopher recruit. Touchdown catch right here. But Elk River would rally to win. Kate Osterman scores the touchdown. He's the quarterback. The final tonight, 57-56. Elk River, a winner. To begin with, this game was close. Marcelo and Andover trading touchdowns. And then turnovers happened. Then the Huskies turned Caden Wheeler and Sam Musungu loose. I like challenges. Anything, anything one on one matchup, match I'm going to take it every time. So, I mean, the quarterback trusts me. I trust him. Whoever it is, we're going to throw it. I mean, we just work hard in practice. I mean, that's really it. But, I mean, we kept fighting back. And the score results. I like I like the way our team's competing right now. Uh, you got to give them a lot of credit. There's a reason they're number one in 5A. Um, but the the competition level's been high. It's been a high you know intensity game. Um, our freshman quarterback's playing really well. Um, our offensive line's doing well. We just got to tackle a little better. Hard fought game and an emotional one too. Unsportsmanlike line conduct and over sideline. We just got to calm down and just play our game and, and, and just one play at a time, as they say, right? Just focus on this one. We got two quarters left, and we'll finish it out. By the end of the first half, the Huskies were up 35-14. to 14. After this, you got all this put together. What will a successful season look like? State championship. That's all we care about. Of course, Andover has had a great year. Their defense has been so good. Here they go to work, forcing a turnover on downs against the Magic. And then their quarterback, Connor DeVellis, 20 of 28. 237 yards, six touchdown passes tonight, 49-14 Andover. When we got to Apple Valley, St. Thomas Academy already had this game in hand. Noah Erickson to TJ Adams, this game was a blowout. They're undefeated, the Cadets, 
49 to nothing was the final score tonight. Big game at Armstrong. Chaska Armstrong. Whoops, this is Emmett Johnson. I think we've got the wrong third, no, wrong thing, I think. That's Emmett Johnson with a touchdown run there, then a TD pass from Borman. So Holy Angels in this football game against Chan Hassan. And then Chan comes back. Charlie Coonan scored a couple of big touchdowns in the third. He can catch it as well. Chan Hassan really opened up the passing game, and there are some guys wide open. That's a breakdown on defense and a touchdown for Chan Hassan. Uh, they win it over Holy Angels 31-21. Third quarter, so Holy Angels loses tonight to Chan 31-21. All right, let's see where we are. Sauk Rapids Rice and Moorhead. Quarterback Jack Klein with the keeper, but Julio Ngati rips the ball from his hands and takes off for Moorhead. They upset Sauk Rapids Rice tonight. Final score was 21 to 12. Big win tonight for Moorhead. 3A and Eli Gilman was the story early. Touchdown run here. He's having a sensational year. The uh, Montana commit, really good. Nice run here. He scored twice tonight. Watch the trickery. Gilman tosses it back to Gregory Clark, and then he'll chuck it deep for a wide open Devin Wynn. Monster gain on the flea flicker. Dassel wins tonight. 20 to 6 was the final. Jack Boyle to the end zone. A teammate loses a helmet. Man, there's some crunching and hitting going on in there. Braden Sanders rolls out and buys time for the Hawks. He's got some pretty good feet as a quarterback. But watch what happens next. Cordell Wilson is waiting in the end zone. Not this time, he says, oh, that's a pick. Armstrong in it, but Chaska does it again. Sanders gets one-on-one -on -one coverage and decides to go down the sideline to Carver Miller. Miller's there, makes quite a catch. Good protection. Yeah. Chaska, look at that. Chaska wins it 17-6. to Park Center football at home to face Richfield. First quarter, it's Marcus Freeman throwing to Chris Frazier who makes a nice catch for a 28-yard touchdown, and it's 7-0 Park Center. Freeman drops a nice pass right into the hands of Joe Burgess for a score. 282 yards passing for Freeman in the game. The Pirates are up 14-0. Freeman throws for another score here on the quick pass to Ansa Kaba. Park Center now up 21-0 on the way to their sixth win. Do much all night. Quavis Hornsby throws the Spartans runner down for a big loss. Park Center adds one more score before halftime. Mark Hava scores in the short touchdown run. Park Center with 470 yards of total offense and they win big 48 to six. And not only are they hosting TC, but they finally get to play a home game on their brand new turf. Here it is mid-October and they finally get out there and uh, loving it, you know, it's, it's just great. Touchdown run here by Toby Anene, back from injury, making it 7-0. And then it's Tanner Zolnoski to Braden McDougal. Eastridge winning tonight over Eastview. And this is a battle of two teams having really nice turnaround years. Evan Berth, 15-yard touchdown run to put Park up 16-6. A little bit later, Berth with the pass to Brady Perriman for a 14-yard gain. Park Cottage goes on to win. Final score tonight, 30-27. Both teams looking for their first win of the year. Totino Grace running back Hunter Carlson. Big 43-yard run. And the Eagles win tonight, 14-3 over Champlin Park. White Bear Lake winning tonight at Osseo. Anthony Lewis Royal. Nice touchdown run here. And White Bear Lake wins tonight at Osseo. And that's a nice victory, 41-27. At Tartan, their passing game. Working right here, Braden Tulso to Mikey Say. Nice touchdown strike. Boy, it was all Spring Lake Park tonight. Final score, 55 to seven. Trojans flex, this is Brendan Piper and he's got the goods. Pure speed in the open field. They're a good combination. He has both and he won't be stopped. Trojans go on and win this one going away, 27 to nothing. Wow, good highlights. Yeah, this is pretty with the skyline in the background. A beautiful fall night on the island. It's De La Salle against Minneapolis Southwest. The Islanders, DJ Simmons. Sack! They've been looking for some success this season. Southwest was able to answer. This is Preston Engen. He's going to drop back. Look right the entire time. 
And Tom Whoa. Gregor said, boy, he was lowly there waiting for the ball. That touchdown, though, wasn't enough. Elo Sal uh, wins at 32-17, their second win of the season. To Joseph Koch, 16 yards on the touchdown strike here, and the Pioneers go on to win tonight at home. In the first quarter, no score. Mayo turned to the air for a big game. Carter Holcomb stiff arms a defender, then takes it up the sideline to put Mayo in the red zone. Later in the drive, the Spartans found the end zone. Running back Noah Smith gets to the outside, takes it to the house. That's a touchdown. Mayo up 7 0 early. Later in the quarter, same score. The Packers turn to the air. Quarterback Jack Lang looks deep. He wants it all. He finds Manny Guy. Austin all the way down to the five yard line. They later find the end zone. Great fake here from Joseph Walker. Lang goes untouched to the end zone. We are all tied up at seven, but. Mayo had the answer on the ensuing kickoff. The Spartans have so much speed to defend. Smith gets to the outside, and there is not a Packer that can catch him. It's a kickoff return for a touchdown as the Spartans took a 13-7 lead pending the point after. At the end of the day, Austin goes, or Mayo, excuse me, goes on the road and wins that one 42-20. How about the near identical finishes in the prior Lake Rosemount game and the Farmington-Lakeville North battle? Both had incredible hook and ladder, last second plays, the exact same play. Here it is, prior Lake against Rosemount, Kyle Haas the pass, then the pitch to Joey Krause, and he takes it for the touchdown as they win over Rosemount 27-24. At the same time over at Farmington, Connor Weed back to pass, he'll connect, Ben Biskins runs across the field, takes the lateral, and scores the touchdown. The exact same hook and ladder. Farmington won with a two-point conversion to beat Lakeville North. That was crazy. 414 career games and has 52 years of coaching under his belt. Verndale hosting Wheaton, Herman, Norcross. First quarter of the, off a of fumble recovery, Dylan Orlando finds a streaking Zach Olson for the touchdown. Two-point conversion is good. 8-0 Pirates in front. Warriors respond. Jake Ellers muscles his way for the touchdown to tie the game. To the second quarter, Zachary Bratton fakes the run, and then runs it in himself to give the Warriors a 16-8 lead at the half. Opening drive of the third quarter off a big run from Ben Brownlow sets up Gideon Urbassi. Touchdown, two-point failed, 16-14. Ensuing possession, Bratton's pass is picked off by Orlando. That was a momentum switch in the game. Verndale actually scored with 30 seconds left to go up 38-31. That's your final.